Okay. All right. Everybody sees the, uh, the euro dollar chart, right? Those of you who follow me before, those of you who follow me on Twitter, those of you who've been in my, my other webinars know the, know the flow set up pretty well. Uh, those of you who are new, I'm just going to, I'm going to share it with you, um, very quickly. The flow setup basically takes place during the 4 a.m. to 12 noon New York time, which is whatever translate that, translate over to your GMT time, but it's basically during the European open to, to the European close when Europe and um, New York intersect, when London and New York intersect the highest liquidity times, and we trade primarily, uh, we, we, we trade the euro dollar in that time, it's the most liquid instrument, and we try to go with the momentum move. The idea basically is that if, if, if the pair has moved 50 points um, in one direction from the OO level, we're going to join that move and hope that we can move it towards the other 50 level. So in this particular case, um, I'm just going to show you if, uh, you know, the, the euro dollar went through 3450, right? In, in, into, into Europe, right? Off of pretty much off the 3400 out of Asia Had a lot of power. We got long here. We got stopped out on a very, very annoying, um, uh, news clip about the, the fact that the Irish are going to vote for this, um, uh, the European, um, bailout, uh, thing. And basically, as many of you who, who just followed me on Twitter knows, I, I think that it, 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 this is a non-event. The Irish are going to vote for it. What are they going to do? Uh, Get out of the euro uh, right now. It's going to be a disaster for them if they do. So I think you know they're, they're going to uh, have a referendum. The referendum is probably going to pass. Although of course Ireland was the one that, that that rejected the original EU treaty. That's why a lot of people were a little bit worried. So anyways, bottom line is this created a massive amount of instantaneous sovereign debt angst that pulled us down, stopped out the 3400 on the stops, and bounced right back up. Right. Um, so that's that's just day trading. Sometimes sometimes you trade the market. Sometimes you, the market trades you. Today was clearly a day where the market traded you. But the general setup is a move from the 50 to the 00, and you can see how many times it's worked very well. Last week, it was basically, I think, three for three. You see how strong the moves are uh, over here. If you guys want me to just kind of mark it for you, I'll mark it for you over here. Here, here was one setup that made money. Here's another setup that made money. Um, the way we trade it, by the way, in DK is we uh, we actually don't go all the way to the 00. We go to the uh, uh, 33 points forward, so 80, 83 on the upside or 17 to the downside. Uh, because we obviously see that there's a lot of, there's usually a lot of optionality. There's a lot of barrier protection at the OO. So sometimes it's not going to make it um, all the way up there. So anyways, um, that's the classic flow setup, right? So um, what I wanted to show you was this other setup that I, that I showed at the New York um, Traders Expo. And then I wanted to show you kind of a twist on, on both things. And then, I'll, and then I'll show you my real trades today so we can, we can all discuss what kind of a cluster disaster it was today. And how I was able to kind of uh, survive it a little bit, uh, at least for the time being. All right. So that's the flow setup. Anybody have any questions uh, on understanding how the flow works in its broad outline? Um, I'm not going to get into the details of it because um, there's there's so much information of it on the web. If you want to go to uh, to our YouTube channel, if you want to go to bkforexadvisors.com, I'll put up the links. There's thousands of different um, uh, videos that, that describe the setup. Right. I do flow the uh, the Aussie dollar as well. Um, the Aussie dollar, I try to flow. Uh, pretty much through actually through the uh, uh, round numbers. In other words, I wanted to go through the round number and then I'm going to join the flow instead of the 52 to round number. But um, you know, Aussie is not as um, not as effective as the euro. Um, Aussie will, will you know will fake you out a few times. Although I'll show you my Aussie trades today. I um, mean, you'll see you know you'll see me uh, uh, taking some trades as well. Uh, yeah, I, Aussie is, is the problem with the Aussie is that. Um, it also is very liquid in Asia. So you really, from Aussie, I would say you probably should expand the time frame from, let's say, 7 p.m. New York time to probably, you know, uh, 12 noon uh, New York time because you really want to trade through Asia since Aussie is the uh, is the liquidity uh, center as well. As well. So it's just a much more difficult um, uh, trade to make. That's why I'm not as, uh, I'm not as, uh, you know, intense about my trading the Aussie as I am um, uh, everything else. By the way, this is an hourly chart. This doesn't matter. Everybody's asking me, you know, what 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 time frame I trade this on. Um, I don't trade on any time frame. It's it, it's between the time frames, um, and it, the trade sometimes can last an hour. Sometimes the last trade can last two hours. Last week I was gone. Kathy had a trade that literally lasted, I believe, like two days before it finally hit. Um, I don't know where where it was. What was the trade? There was a trade there where she was just holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it forever. I think uh, maybe this was it, like where she was really holding it. She was holding it from here. 
uh, all the way until it finally hit over here. Or I think, no, 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 what the hell was it? I don't know where it was, wherever. She was really, you know, it just took a long time for this trade to develop. Um, and, uh, um, you know, sometimes it's, this, my point being is that, is that, you know, the trade is not candles dependent, but I use, like to use hourly candles just because hourly give me a good, um, time frame to, to operate on. I think that's a reasonable time frame on a daily chart to, to operate on. So I want to show the reason why I bring the hourly too is because the hourlies are also, I'm going to change symbols for you here because um, this is a trade that, that works best on this particular symbol. The hourlies are also another another uh, trade pattern that I like to trade. And this is the exact opposite of momentum. This is basically the momentum exhaustion uh, uh, set up, setup. And one of the interesting things that I think you guys can learn here, hopefully it will, it will help you, is when you're trading, there's basically only two types of trading you can make. You can either make momentum trading or anti-momentum trading, basically trend or turn, right? There's only two, two, two states that the price can stay in. So in a perfect world, what you really want to do is set up a situation where you have one setup that is momentum-based and one setup that is turn-based. And hopefully, um, as the market environment changes, you're able to catch um, the moves, you know, the momentum moves in one, in one setup and the turn moves in the other setup. And the fusion of the two setups inevitably, hopefully, uh, provides you with, with a more uh, dampened volatility on, on, on your equity curve. In other words, with, with a little bit, perhaps maybe a little bit less, a um, uh, little bit less tippage overall, but your drawdowns would be substantially lower because you're able to take advantage of the changing phase of the market. So anyways, the uh, turn trade, the, the anti-momentum trade that I like to trade, very simple. If you notice, all my trades are very, very simple. I don't um, believe in, in cluttering up the um, uh, the chart or cluttering up your ideas. I'm using RSI. RSI is as old uh, an indicator as there ever has been from 1970s. Well, it's wild. A great indicator. Um, its primary function is to basically uh, tell you we're using a 14 period, which is the default period, but just tells you oversold and overbought conditions. That's all it does. This, by the way, is I think a very, very big mistake. Every rookie trader says, ooh, RSI above 70, I'm going to be a seller. Ooh, RSI below 30, I'm going to be a buyer. Stupidest trade ever. Because remember, if it's below 30, you can go to 20, you can go to 15, you can go to 8, you know, you can go to 8, you can go to 85. Just because it's oversold doesn't mean that this is a sell. Or just because it's overbought doesn't mean it's a sell. Just because it's oversold um, doesn't mean it's a buy, right? All it is is just a temperature. It's the temperature of the market. It tells you you have a lot of fever or you're super cold, whatever, however you want to view it, right? The way I trade the setup is a little different. I let the market or the indicator in this case tell me when the turn is most likely. That is, what I'm looking for is for the fever to break, right? To use, to use the medical analogy. So here we are super, 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 super hot, right? And, um, my idea is only when the, on the hourly candle, the RSI drops below 70, am I going to get short the, the underlying? Or only when the RSI, after dipping below 30, drops, it pops back up above 30, am I going to get long the underlying, right? 